What's up champion? Thank you for continuing this growth track journey with us and I just want to remind you again according to 1st Peter 2 5 you are a living stone and you are being built up into a spiritual house and that's our prayer for you Lord build them up that's my prayer for you right now while you're watching this I pray that you will be built up I pray that God will come and stir your heart touch you encourage you even through this medium of a video and even though you are still trying to just discover more about our church and find out more about our church I pray that God will just encourage you then you'll hear a, a, a voice of hope listen his voice always affirms and that's the beauty of of scripture in general just hearing his voice and specifically in this video where we ask that big question Lord what is my purpose why am I here what have you placed inside of me do you have a calling for me the answer is yes and I pray that you clearly hear the Holy Spirit's word in this so we're gonna get going and listen I'm gonna give you a lot of scripture because again you're gonna hear God's voice through scripture so Here's, a, here's the thought that we're going to start with. You have a purpose, and as a church, we want to help you to discover your purpose. You are God's masterpiece, and you have been created for good things. That is what Ephesians 2.10 says. You are God's masterpiece. And I want you to just think about that as we get started here, this whole discovery process. God said, when I made you, I didn't make a mistake. When I made you, I made a quality being. And then he also said, I breathe my spirit into you, so you are good stuff. That's basically what Ephesians says right there. So here's the next one. God has placed greatness inside of you. Look at Jeremiah 1.5. It says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you, I ordained you. So we believe that even though that was written about Jeremiah, we believe that that's the truth that's true for all of us. We like to say it this way at Livingstones. We believe that birth equals purpose. And then we also believe that breath equals purpose. What does that mean? It means the fact that you were born in this generation, in, your, in this community, the fact that God had you predestined for a specific time that's big for our human minds to understand but we believe that God had a purpose behind that you know Luke 4 43 Jesus said I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also because for this purpose I have been sent he knew his purpose and we discovering our purpose inside of his bigger purpose for us as his church so birth equals purpose birth equals destiny and then also breath equals purpose breath equals destiny what does that mean if you're still breathing if you woke up this morning we believe that God has a purpose for you so we want to help you discover that but just know God has a plan for your life you have been designed with a destiny so we like to say it this way your design reveals your destiny so look what David writes in the Psalms Psalm 139 for you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Think about that. You too have been wonderfully made. So we're looking at a lot of different scriptures. Old Testament, the New Testament, the prophets, the Psalms, Paul's writing. And it all says the same thing. It all says God created you with a purpose. And when He made you, He made something of good quality because he placed his attributes his heart his nature inside of you and we just want to come and wake that up and Holy Spirit I'm praying that right now everybody that's watching this stir up the gift in their heart help them see themselves through your eyes how beautiful is this fearfully and wonderfully made so we also want you to discover your gift mix you have some natural abilities. We're going to look at the life of David. David was born with a purpose. He was born to be king. And we're just going to follow his life. There are many other biblical characters. But I think David is a great example. Because he wasn't flawless. But God still used him regardless of his mistakes. Regardless of his flaws. God takes 
ordinary people and he does extraordinary things through his people so we believe that the same way that David had a purpose you too have a purpose so it says in 1st Samuel 16 verse 13 then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward so here's David he's kind of discovering what God has for him and there's this moment where the prophet comes and anoints him and basically says, David, I know you've been on the backside of the of the mountain. You've kind of just been watching sheep. You had to fight off a lion, fight off a bear. But you know what? God has greater plans for you. And maybe you feel like you've been on the backside of a proverbial mountain. You know, you've been tending sheep. Kind of maybe something that's not been that adventurous or exciting. Maybe just mundane. Maybe even frustrating. And I pray that you'll have these moments where the Holy Spirit will come to you and say listen my child I've placed greatness inside of you and it's time for that to come forth so we also want you to discover the acquired skills that you have so you have natural abilities that's what God has placed inside of you but then we also all have some acquired skills and I like to put it this way preparation time is never wasted time so we're all on this journey and we'll, we believe every season we go through that God is using us in that season, but He's also preparing us for what He has for us next. Look at this awesome verse. In Proverbs 4.18 it says, But the path of the just, that's you, you've been justified because of what Jesus has done, is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. Your path moves forward. Your path is like the sun that shines brighter and brighter. To me, that's a, that's a verse of hope right there. So you will hear this a lot at, at Living Stones. We believe that because of Christ, we have a future. So we like to say this. We're somewhere in the future, and we look much better than we look right now. That's a song I heard a long time ago, and that just stayed with me. So can you see yourself somewhere in the future and can you believe that God can redeem your current situation that your path is like the shining sun that shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day so now let's look at the life of David how this unfolds in his life in 1st Samuel 16 18 it says one of the servants answered and said look I've seen the son of Jesse he is skillful in playing he's a mighty man of valor He's a man of war. He's prudent in speech. He's handsome. And the Lord is with him. Sometimes the, God, the Lord will use other people to help make up your resume. Sometimes the Lord will use other people to recognize the greatness that God has played, placed inside of him. So let's look at David's awesome resume. This is basically somebody that David doesn't even know. Who's telling the king about this man that he met and he is basically reading his resume the same way we would make up a resume this is our experience this is our gift mix these are the things that we've done in the past these are the things that we're good at look at everything that God had placed inside of David it says he was skillful in playing so he was a musician he was also a mighty man of valor so he had a strong passion inside of him God given a man of war he wasn't afraid he was a great spokesperson, he was handsome, and then also the Lord was with him. Now I think that final phrase, that's the biggest compliment or the biggest strength that you can add to your resume. God with me. If my God is for me, then who can ever stand against me? So I want you to take a moment and if you don't mind, just place your hand on your heart wherever you are listening to this and just say this out loud. Say, God is with me. God is in me, God is for me. That is the best compliment that anybody can pay you. That's the best strength that you can put on your resume. God is with me. The Lord was with David. But just look at how he used his musical skills, his abilities, everything that came natural. He was a musician, but then God added his super to David's natural. So we believe also that you have some spiritual gifts. So you have some natural abilities, things that you've been born with, 
acquired skills over time you develop your gifts and then the spiritual gifts and that's where God's super is added to your natural and you see the supernatural taking place so look at this he was a musician in 1st Samuel 16 23 David would take a harp play it with his hand then Saul would become refreshed and well so what happened there here is David he's been anointed king next step God gets him into the palace but he's not the king yet and now he has to be faithful in that season it talks about Saul being tormented and the spirit will come over Saul and it basically says David would use his natural gift of music but because it was anointed God's spirit on David's songs would bring peace to that room and we believe that that's the beauty of tapping into your gift your spiritual gift God has placed a gift in your heart or a gift mix and when you operate in that yes you do what you can in the natural but God's presence is evident in that and it brings peace it brings forth speeding things up you do things in a supernaturally fast way it brings forth just effectiveness a calmness and people stand back and often you stand back yourself and you say wow look what the Lord has done and we want to help you find those gifts that's been placed inside of you so here's another example David said to the Philistine the, this day the Lord will deliver you into my hand so in 1st Samuel 17 we see David so again he was a man of valor God had placed that inside of him he had to kill a lion he had to kill a bear that was preparation time that was practice time that he was faithful in that season because he cared about his father's sheep we don't know how many sheep it was but we do know when he came and uh, came to the battlefield delivering lunch again being faithful and a small task his dad says David go take your brother's lunch you've been tending the sheep you've been faithful in that can you now go and deliver lunch he gets there and you can go and read how his brothers basically ridiculed him and they said what are you doing here and then that actually says why are you not tending those few sheep and it's almost like really did you have to say it like that I've been faithful in what I've been doing so don't be surprised if not everybody celebrates your moment when God is getting ready to elevate you but David that that passion inside of his heart was activated when he heard this giant defying the living God he's God that was with him when he was writing those Psalms and writing those songs and just cultivating God's presence and then God said you know what David this is your moment I'm gonna use you that gift that I've placed inside of you but I'm gonna put my supernatural on your natural my super on your natural and you're gonna take this giant out and that's what he did so we believe that there are gifts that God have placed inside of you and when you use those gifts you see the supernatural taking place I like this verse it says in 1 Chronicles 4, 14 verse 2, David perceived that the Lord had confirmed him king over Israel. David perceived. Some translations said he realized. And my prayer is that even through you watching this, that you will start realizing that you have a purpose. That you will start realizing. It starts in your mind. It starts in your mind knowing that yes I might have been doing something on a small scale but what I've been doing here on a small scale God has called me to do it in a different arena in a different audience or at a different level but you gotta see it in your mind you gotta know that okay God has called me yes I'm flawless yes I'm not perfect I understand that but through his grace he has called me and God wants to just use my life as an instrument to inspire other people so uh, I want you to perceive again everything we've read up to every verse just points at the same thing that you are his masterpiece created for good things that he has prepared for you and we want to help you find it so here's a practical way you're like okay I hear you I'm gifted I have skills God has placed that inside of me I understand but how do I discover that so there's a very practical tool and it's called a spiritual gift assessment 
So that's something that you can do in your own time. It's very simple. It's going to take a few minutes. And you can go and just look it up. And you see the link there where you can go and find it. And just look it up and take some time and discover what are your most prominent spiritual gifts. So again, I encourage you to just go and take this journey. There are many tools like that. You know, you can just Google and find different versions of it. You can do it on your phone. You can print off a piece of paper. And that's a practical way of finding out what are my signature gifts or my dominant gifts in this season. And that just helps you to discover who God has made you to be. So right now we've talked about discovering your purpose, discovering your gift mix. And now for a moment I want to talk to you about discovering your calling. Because again, we believe that everybody is called. Everybody has a calling. So look at this verse in Isaiah 2.2. 2. It said, Now it shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow to it. I'll talk to you more about mountains in a moment. But let's die in Matthew 13, 33, where Jesus says, The kingdom of heaven is like yeast. When it's hidden in the meal, it basically infiltrates the bread. It infiltrates the dough. Okay, so think about that. Isaiah 2, 2. The mountain of the Lord's house will be established on top of the mountains. Something you will hear us talk about a lot at Living Stones are the spheres of society, and we call them mountains. You might have heard a lot of teachings on the mountains. Maybe you're familiar with this, or maybe this is something new to you. But we believe that there are seven spheres, seven areas that make up any society. You see this throughout history. And you also see it in our modern day society. So this is sort of bigger picture, bigger umbrella. But we believe that you can look at these areas and you can at least identify that right now where I am in my life, I feel like I'm called to one or two of those areas. It helps you to know what you're not called to. You can say, well, I can eliminate this one and I can eliminate that one to help clarify what am I called to. So here are the seven. We believe that in every society you have church, you have family, you have education, you have government, you have business, you have the media or technology mountain, and then you have the arts and entertainment. So let me just use an example. I believe in my life that I am called to the church mountain I believe that I'm called to the family mountain. I also believe that I'm called to education. And through my life, I can see how those have interconnected. It helps to know what you're not called to. Right now in my life, I don't feel like I'm called to government. Even though I'm a citizen of the United States, I don't even know, you know, how high I can climb the government mountain but I'm not exploring that because I know that's not my calling now it's a very important mountain and I know that other people are called to that so I want to come and help them identify that and encourage them that's part of what we do as the church and even part of education help you grow help you study family again that's the heart of our church strong families equal strong communities so I want you to look at that list again and just think for yourself, can you at least say one area, am I feel like I'm called to some form of ministry, whether it's pastoral or a missionary or in the music ministry, um, you know, be a small group leader, uh, become a counselor. Right now, is family my main focus? Is this the area that I need to focus in? Maybe if you're a school teacher, obviously you can see how that's your mountain or any form of education. Like I used the example of government. We need God's people in government. Maybe you're in the business arena or you are considering starting a business. There'll be a passion inside of that for you. Uh, same with those that are called to the media. And we live in a 
technology-driven world. That's a gift and a passion that God will place inside of you. And the same with arts and entertainment. What I love about the arts is it's the ability to see God's creative power displayed through people. Think about a painting, think about a brand new song, think about everything that falls under art and entertainment. There was nothing, and then a person or people, they get an idea, a thought, and then they give life to that idea, whether it's a clean canvas and now we paint something, or it's you know, a clean sheet of paper and next moment there's a song, or whatever it is. And that's a beautiful thing. God has called certain people to be gifted in those certain areas. So I encourage you to pray about those areas and say, Lord, help me to identify which of these do I feel I'm called to for this season in my life. So you've got your spiritual gifts assessment. You can identify some of your main spiritual gifts. And now you can also start clarifying my calling. What area am I called to? Then finally, we want you to discover your place. We believe that everybody is a 10 out of 10 in some area. In 1 Corinthians 12 verse 4, it says there are diversity of gifts, but the same spirit. So once again, within the local church, we believe there's a place for everybody. And there's an area where you can serve where you will just flourish. You will enjoy it. And you'll be good at it. And at Living Stones, there are plenty of opportunities. Whether it's joining our setup team, or whether it's becoming a greeter or an usher, joining the praise team. You know, maybe you feel like you've got the gift to teach the Word. Lead a small group. Uh, join the prayer team. Maybe you're an intercessor. Join our, our prayer group. Maybe you feel called to missions. You want to join our mission projects or our local outreaches. Um, if you have a passion to work with children, you know, it takes a certain gift to work with toddlers and to change diapers and to, you know, clean up after them. But there are people who are gifted in that area. And those are all opportunities so to teach our older children or help raise up the next generation of champions. Those are all opportunities that are available and we just want you to find your place. We believe you're a 10 out of 10 in some area, and we want to help you find that area. We also believe that everybody is called to ministry. In Ephesians 4, it gives a job description to those in the church sphere or church mountain. And it says, we are supposed to equip the saints, those that have been declared righteous, so that's you, for their work of ministry. And we believe that ministry happens everywhere you are. On a Sunday morning there are opportunities, but when you leave the building on a Sunday morning, you are entering your mission field. Every sphere of life, every mountain you go into, you want to be that yeast. His light shining through you. And we believe that God's kingdom, His light is the hope to the world, and He wants to bring hope through you. So please know that you are part of God's dream team. Again, Ephesians 2.10, you are God's masterpiece. You've been created for good things. And we have a team of people that we call our dream team. It's a group of dreamers. They dream about their future. They dream together about the future of our church. And it's just a group of people who serve and just give generously. So let me say it this way. At Living Stones, we believe that giving and serving should be driven by a desire and not an obligation. So at Living Stones, we're going to make you aware of opportunities, but we're never going to try and twist your arm. We're never going to try and manipulate you. We're never going to try and pressure you into. But we are going to invite you, and we're going to continue to invite you. And this is an invitation, again, for you to take that next step. Get involved. Because we're, we believe in the local church. We believe in what God is doing through our church. And we believe that you can add value to our church. And that by you becoming more involved, that it will add value to your life and to your family. So again, I want to encourage you, wherever you are on your journey, just take that next step. Maybe 
you haven't received salvation, you haven't been baptized, that's called evangelism, it's available to you at Living Stones. There's a link on our website where you can just go and click and I'm, I'll lead you in a prayer of salvation. And in our next Growth Track session, I'll talk more about baptism, why we baptize and how we baptize. I encourage you to complete the Growth Track. You're halfway, well, you two-thirds through. And uh, I encourage you to just watch the next video. And this is all part of the discipleship process. We encourage you to join a small group. Again, everybody needs Sunday sometime. Relationships are not optional. They are oxygen. And listen, I believe at Living Stones you can find a family. A place where you can belong. A place of acceptance. That's who we are. That's how hard is a church. We're not going to judge you. We're not going to condemn you. Because you know what? God extends His grace to us. We all have a past. We all have made mistakes. We all have messed up. We all have missed it. But God gives us a second chance. You know, the, and Proverbs says, the righteous person, that's you, may fall seven times, but they get back up again. So we're not the perfect people at Living Stones, but we're the getting back up people. And at a small group, you can find that group, that support structure, that can pick you up, and then also some friends whose hands you can take and say, hey, let me encourage you. You're a champion. God has placed greatness inside of you. So we encourage you to join one of our small groups. And we ask you, we invite you to join our dream team to start serving. And we believe that you'll be encouraged. You'll be a blessing to our church. You'll be a blessing to our families, to our children, to everybody that's part of this church. So again, thank you for taking the time to explore here. I pray that this encourages you. Maybe you can go back and re-listen to this, especially to answer that question, Lord, what's my gift? What's my purpose? And let the Holy Spirit start revealing to you the greatness He has placed inside of you. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Listen, we believe in you because God believes in you. And we want to encourage you. So my prayer is that you will discover your gift and that you will flourish in it. Holy Spirit, I pray that right now for everybody watching. Show them who you have created them to be. Raise them up as champions. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching. Make sure to watch Growth Track 301. Be blessed. Be strong.